A psychotic disorder is a mental disorder in which thoughts and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. Schizophrenia is the most common psychotic disorder. It affects 1% of the population, with approximately 60% being male and the onset of symptoms can start during teenage years. Now what makes schizophrenia really interesting is that the symptoms are almost identical to what you see in horror movies. In this video I will go over the symptoms of schizophrenia, how to identify if someone is schizophrenic and some possible causes and risk factors. So schizophrenia is a clinical syndrome that affects cognition, perception, emotion and behaviour. The symptoms can be classified into four groups, positive and negative cognitive and mood symptoms. Positive symptoms are mainly characterised by auditory hallucinations which is where the patient hears things that are not there. They may also hear someone talking about them in third person. This is characteristic of schizophrenia. They may hear someone giving a commentary of what they are doing and they may hear their thoughts out loud. It can also involve somatic hallucinations such as feeling insects crawling up their skin. Stereotypic movements, which is unnecessary purposeless movements, delusions which are false beliefs with no evidence, and lastly thought disorders which can be thought insertions, which is a feeling that one's thoughts are not one's own, thought withdrawal, thought interruptions, which is the feeling that someone is interrupting their thoughts, and thought broadcasting, which is the feeling of thoughts coming out their head. Negative symptoms can include feeling withdrawn, having a lack of interest and motivation, anhedonia, the inability to take pleasure from things that are pleasurable, and blunted emotions. Cognitive symptoms can include having impaired memory or concentration, and having speech impediments such as a lisp or stammer. Mood symptoms can include anxiety and depression. So how is someone diagnosed of schizophrenia? Well, the presence of Schneider's first rank symptoms are strongly suggestive of schizophrenia. It can involve having two or more of the following symptoms and must include one of the first three symptoms. Hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, grossly abnormal psychotic disorder, and a negative symptoms which can include feeling withdrawn, anhedonia, and blunted emotions. The symptoms must be present for one month continuously during the last six months and they must have a significant impact on the person's ability to work, study, or perform daily tasks. Also, all other possible causes for the symptoms must be eliminated before making the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Examples of other possible causes include bipolar disorder, and recreational drugs. So how is it caused? Well there is no exact known cause of schizophrenia but there are risk factors. It may be due to a combination of genetic predisposition, environmental factors, social and psychological factors. This can lead to abnormalities in the development of the neurons in the brain, leading to brain dysfunction due to an improper balance of the chemicals. So what is the biology of the disease? What exactly is going on in the person's head that is causing them to act the way that they are? Well, there are four theories to the cause of schizophrenia. These are not standalone theories and it may be a combination of all four which cause the psychotic disorder. The first is the glutamate hypothesis, which is that schizophrenia is due to a dysfunction or deficiency in glutamate transmission. Glutamate is a chemical in the brain that has an important role in learning and a memory, and a reduction of this chemical has been seen in those suffering schizophrenia. The second theory is the dopamine hypothesis. The clearest evidence of this hypothesis is that drugs that block the action of dopamine have antipsychotic effects. Dopamine has many roles in the brain and it is important in the control of movement and the feeling of pleasure. Increased dopamine activity in certain areas of the brain and decreased dopamine activity in other areas of the brain have been seen to lead to the symptoms of schizophrenia. The third theory is the serotonin hypothesis. Serotonin also has many roles in the brain, such as the regulation of mood, appetite, and sleep, as well as cognitive functions, such as memory and learning. Like a dopamine, some of the most potent antipsychotic drugs are drugs that block the action of serotonin, so it may be an increase in serotonin activity causing schizophrenia. Lastly is the estrogen hypothesis. This theory suggests that estrogen has a protective role, and so a lack of this hormone can cause the mental disorder. As mentioned, it may be a combination of these four hypotheses that is leading to schizophrenia and the treatment that is used typically relies on trying to restore the balance of the chemicals in the brain. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos.